Because the, the best thing about um, Babby and Shane McGuigan is I think they've run confidence out of me. So, like, all the years I've been fighting, I've never really had that confidence. It's kind of like, I'd beat people, but I was thinking, why is everyone, like, saying I'm really good? Why is everyone a bit of, like, I'm a height train sort of thing? Because I didn't really see, like, I just thought, oh, I just love fighting, that's all. And then um, when I went to Barry and Shane, they started like saying like you can beat these girls and just really complimentary. And it started making me think, thinking, oh, I must be half decent because they don't seem like the sort of guys who just fill your head. And um, obviously, like since I've been pro, I've been making statements in the division, and it made me start thinking like, okay, maybe I actually can beat these girls. Like, I can be a world champion. I can take over. And I think with Barry saying all that, it motivates me more because the last thing I want to do now is let him down and, <laughs> and it all goes pear-shaped and I start getting beaten. So I think it's uh, like him saying all this, especially public it, publicly, because I think, okay, it's a bit of pressure, but I'm used to pressure now, so I'm using it and thinking I can't let this guy down because he's said this all over and I have to read these girls now because everyone's just a bit embarrassing. <laughs> yeah, so can you sort of explain a little bit about obviously not getting to the Olympics yeah a little bit about that situation so uh, I spent seven years on Team GB and um, like I was one of the favourites to go to Rio I went to the Rio Testament won the gold there like I was beating everybody really like the only person who I didn't box I boxed Katie Taylor once in 2011 and we never boxed again so everyone else I was beating so um, the gold medalist, silver medalist, bronze medalist I've beaten them all like, more than once the gold medalist eight times so everybody was like, kind of expecting me to qualify for Rio and I thought I can, I can do this because I'm beating everyone anyway like there's nothing that can stop me and then um, come to the qualifiers and I had some like, rough decisions and it was like a bit unfair because like if it was a guy in the ring and so basically there was two rings I hit the girl because it was their bell that went off at times, so and we were still, we were still supposed to continue boxing. Which, like, if it's not our bell, then I shouldn't have got a warning because it's boxing. Defend yourself at all times. And uh, the referee gave me like a public warning. So straight away, I was just like, okay, that's it. Like, I'm not going to qualify now. I knew it because I thought they're, they're being harsh on me. The, the whole fight has been harsh on me. I was rolling shots. I was rolling too low. Everything I was doing was just picking out on me. And as soon as I got that warning, my head just went. I was thinking, that's it, game over. I'm not, I'm not going to go to Rio. Yeah. So I just like kind of just went into fine mode and was scrapping with the girl. And then um, I didn't, didn't qualify, and it was probably the toughest thing I've had in my life so far. <laughs> So my name is Grania Walsh, I'm 22 from Ireland and I'm the 69 kilo champion of Ireland and I'm on the pathway to Tokyo for the next Olympics in two years time. So. Okay. And so how do you two know each other? Through the amateur boxing, so I was on the Team GB and Grania was on the Irish team. At the Europeans <coughs> we met. So. Okay. so I guess in some respects we were talking earlier about how the uh, amateurs finished to uh, Rio yeah. after the expectations and how did that kind of affect you on a personal level? It was, uh, it was really tough because out of all the boxes that were going to the qualifiers I was the only one that didn't qualify so that was kind of like hard, hard on me as well because everybody, all the weights qualified and I was the only weight division that didn't and the female so that was really tough and obviously I spent seven years just concentrating on the Olympics and like the four, last four years of it was like right this is the Olympic cycle now 
you can be an Olympic champion, your your world's gonna change, like everything's gonna be like set in stone for you sort of thing. So um I kinda like all I was was set on that, that was my path is Olympics. There's no options elsewhere, I was just the road to Rio and that was it. And then um obviously I had no plan B so when I didn't qualify I was really lost and it was like it was just a tough time because all my family and friends were trying to like get me out of this ditch because I just felt like I was falling and I had nothing. I felt like the world had just been turned upside down. So I think it was it was hard for me, it was hard for my family as well, seeing me like that, especially over a sport. Yeah, and obviously you're thinking about the next Olympics. Yeah. And is that something, I guess in some ways as a boxer, it's hard to have that in your mind when you're, you're striving for something. Is that something you thought about yourself in terms of your journey? Yeah, like every amateur boxer dreams of going to the Olympics. And obviously, as Chantelle said, she's been, she was seven years planning on this dream to be Olympic champion. And my journey is a lot shorter than hers because I'm inexperienced. I'm only 22 as well. So I've been on the Irish team for the last two years. So I'm just, I come in at the right time for the four year Olympic cycle and I have two years left now. I'm gaining experience every single day. So um, over the next two years now, it's all about just trying to qualify and 2019 is the big year to qualify, so. Does it help you having someone like Chantel sort of as a friend? Yeah. To kind of give you a bit of guidance or Definitely. take advice from? Yeah, 100% because she's been there and done that and she's on the next the next set of the of the journey, but. I'm obviously where she was a few years ago, but um, yeah, God, I, I learn a lot off Chantel, even sparring and stuff together. Like I learn a lot off her. So, and so you've been through that situation, yeah, and it's hit you hard at that point. So, were you able after it's all happened and thank God everything's gone in a positive way? What did you, what did you take out of that experience? Um, I think pressure. I think that's in the pro game now is. I don't feel pressure so much. In the amateurs, I had so much pressure on my shoulders, literally, it was just like, I have to do this, I have to do this. And I think that probably affected my performance. And as I said earlier, is um, Barry and Shane have brought the best out of me. I kind of wish that I had them in the amateurs because they give me confidence, they believe in me, and they kind of like, even before I go into a fight, Shane will see that I'm really nervous, I feel sick and everything. And he'll just, he'll be like, tell it's just a spa. Like competitive, obviously it's, I know it's not a competitive spa but him just saying that to me just kind of relaxes me and so that's a massive thing I took out of it now is don't put so much pressure on myself enjoy it because boxing is fun and I think with the Olympics it was if I don't win this somebody else is going to get my number one spot they're going to go to the qualifiers they're going to be the number one now so they've got a bigger chance at the Olympics and I think Team GB was just so much pressure and it was just so hard on you and uh, it just I didn't enjoy it either and another thing is, is there's, I have a balance now. So I have boxing, and I love boxing, I love winning, I love being in the ring. But I also remember there's life after boxing. Whereas on Team GB, it was Rio Olympics, win a medal, and see, and your life's made. Because that's what they kind of like tell you that all the time is, you win a medal at the Olympics, your life's going to change, you never have to worry about anything again. And yeah, that, that is true for some people and who actually qualify, who make it to the Olympics and who medal. But if you don't if you don't qualify and you don't medal, you've got to, you've got to start again. Like you've got to find your own path in boxing or a job or whatever. But at eighteen I've never worked. So for me to not qualify for the Olympics, it was kinda of like I'm gonna to have to get a job and I had no idea what job to do, what path to do. I was just like, what the hell am I gonna do in my life now? Because I was twenty five and thinking I'm no spring chicken. So just a bit like, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> so, and what, were, what were your plans at the time? Because did you intend to go pro? No, I'd never thought I was going to go pro. Like, it's always been my dream to actually turn professional because I've always wanted to fight without head guards. Even in my kickboxing days, I was like, I want to go professional. I want to fight without head guard. But um, after the whole Olympics, I was like, I cannot do this anymore. I put my body through hell. I sacrificed so much. Like. Even just the little things, my friends' birthdays, um, engagement parties, baby showers, I'll never go to it because I was like, no, I have to train, I have to get an early night. And that's how dedicated I was, and it was like the dedication that nobody can ever criticise me for that. And um, I think after that, I was just like, I'm walking away from this sport because it took up too much of my life, 
I've missed out on so much. I was like, that's it, it's not worth it. And um, so I was looking for a job, and then the jobs were coming up. I was thinking, and oh, I don't really fancy this, like doing 12 hour shifts. I was like, oh no. <laughs> so um, I got speaking to a guy in Australia who runs boxing classes and goes around to a women's youth, um, youth hostels and everything doing boxing classes and he was setting me up to go out there for a year teaching boxing and obviously like living out there seeing Australia and everything so I was really excited for that and that was all going ahead but then um, there was a connection with McGuigan's and I had a meeting with them and I wasn't really thinking nothing off it I was thinking probably having a meeting with like a few girls but I didn't really think oh they're gonna sign me so I kind of went down there thinking I'll see how it goes and then um, when we got talking and stuff, I was like, oh wow, this actually does sound exciting. And then I'd done pads with Shane and I hadn't trained for three months. So as soon as I started hitting the pads again, I was like, oh God, I hope they signed me. And then, <laughs> and then luckily they signed me. So it's, it's something there. And then now I'm loving boxing. Like even people on GB who was coaching and stuff, who I still speak to now and again, or I see, they were saying like how much happier I am as well. Like seeing me on Team GB and then seeing me now, they're like, I'm like a different person because I can just see that like, I'm happy, I'm enjoying boxing, and I'm just a better place. Okay, so, and have you thought further than the next Olympics? Probably not. Not so much, no. I've not really thought, like Chantelle as well, I've never really think about going pro or whatever. I've not got really much interest other than like I'm supporting Chantelle in her fights and stuff, but I don't know too much about pro boxing. And but it is going from strength to strength, and by the time I'm finishing the amateurs, it could be, you know, a good move to go professional if the opportunity arises. I'll go. Yeah. So you so. go along to the shows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah I've been to. What are the, What's it? How's it different from the amateurs when you go to those shows? It must be it's, completely different. It's actually yeah. fun, like really fun. <laughs> it's a massive occasion. Like in an amateur tournament, you could fight five days, five days in a week, five times in a week. Whereas with professional, you have one big fight and there's so much like media attention and you know there's so much training up for one big fight and obviously the, there's 10 rounds or whatever she does now at the minute. And like, it's just, it's a lot different. And even the style and stuff, like you're a lot better off in, in the process yeah. of that style and stuff. It suits her a lot better. Sorry? Do you like look at that for yourself? I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see, I'm still only a baby, so we'll see what happens. So, personal level, yeah. so looking at where you've come from all the way through to now, so tell us a little bit about some of the people that have maybe been uh, influential in your, in, your, in your life really. Um, definitely my dad, like, he's been a massive support of me and I kind of wish I listened to him years back because he hated amateur boxing, he hated me uh, stuck on GB because he's seen I was unhappy, he's seen the pressure and he's seen like it just wasn't good for me because obviously you see me in my kickboxing days and my tie boxing days it was fun it was enjoyable and it would be like a nice atmosphere but you see on team gb it's kind of like i have to be number one. Oh, if they're doing better than me that means i'm going to lose my spot it was just constant it was just constant it was just always pressure so he said uh years on the team gb like she can tell gal with this like you can beat a girl up for four rounds and if the judges don't like you, you're not going to win. It doesn't matter what you're doing. You're not, you're not going to stop people in amateurs. It's a lot harder because there's head guards, there's bigger gloves. So my dad's been a massive influence because he supported me, like, no matter what anyways. He's had his, like, opinions and stuff. And sometimes I listen, sometimes I won't. So my dad, my brother, a massive influence because, like, he's not a boxer or anything. But if, I, if it was late at night, he'll come for a run with me. And he'll, like, he'll, he'll like, have talks to me about... So he was, like... With um, going to the Olympics, he used to say to me like, you, "Like, what if the Olympics doesn't work?" Like, he was quite brutal with me. Like, he was brutal when I was in that position I was in. So I was like, "How can you say that?" But now I wish I kind of like took it in because he used to say, like, "What if it doesn't work? What are you gonna do? You should you should do education. You should go to uni and stuff like that." And that's the advice you're giving me yeah, now. Yeah, like, that's so. the advice I give to Gwen now because I wish I listened. I didn't. Um, my mum again, like massive influence. Um. Yeah, many, many of my family have been real, real, real big supports. And John, obviously, the amateur coach at Far Cotton, he's been a massive influence because he's seen my ups and downs. And you can kind of tell by my mood. If I come in the gym, I either come in with a smile or come in with, like, just don't talk to Chantel sort of vibe. <laughs> yeah, this is home. Especially because Northampton's my base as well. So 
it's a uh, started here. I've been lived in Northampton all my life. The boxing club that I started at. So obviously it's like it's special to me because when I come in here, it's like you see like the young, the younger boxers coming through, and I think oh like that used to be me. And I think it's good to inspire them as well, so they see where I am at now, and that I've had to be training all like five days a week, in no matter what weather and everything. It's kind of like a nice touch when I come down there, and kind of like give that like inspiration to them as well. So were you inspired by any boxers growing up? No, I was just uh, mainly like Buffy, the vampire slayer. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. so um, <laughs> like when I was growing up, I didn't really like, I didn't watch boxing or nothing. I just liked doing it. And then um, I think as I've like got into boxing, I've been more inspired by the likes of Tyson. I was like thought he was amazing. He's always watching. Um, Cecilia Brackhouse, like now I'm a massive fan of hers because I think she's really good and what she's done for his box is amazing. Katie Taylor, like she's an inspiration because she's opened up the door for all of us. She's a really good boxer. Um, so people like that, I think, as I've got into boxing, I started like looking up people and thinking, oh, that's that's inspiring. But when I first started out, like just TV shows. And do you have the realization that now you're like the next generation of um, boxers that are inspirations, like, not just for like young girls, but for you, for boxing fans as a whole? Um. I don't really, no, I don't really like looking like that. I just, I love working with kids in boxing because I love inspiring them because I think when I was a, a kid, kid boxing, I had no one to look up to and nobody like was there to inspire me. So now like, I think I like giving that back because I wish I had that and I, because I didn't. So now I think that's like more my motivation. Plans for the future? So I'm hoping to be a coach, but not um, like an amateur coach, I think like, more coaching for like boxer size, women's classes, not so much the actual fighting side of it, just for people to gain on confidence, self-respect, and like socialize, just things like that. So not taking them to actual fights. If they want to fight, then I just like push them elsewhere. <laughs> but uh, I think that as well, especially to help women for confidence and stuff. And obviously I'm doing the charity for women's domestic abuse. So kind of hopefully that will um, take off and be a bit bigger. And, do a lot of work with that and after my boxing quiz I'm, I'm going to go to uni. I tried going to uni last year when I started with the professionals but it was just way too much work because especially when I was fighting for the world title it was I, I um, applied for uni and then I had the world title and I was kind of like oh this is, this is going to be really hard and I was trying to do the assignments in the gym at, in London but I just couldn't do it so I pulled out and I thought well I'm going to come back to this. Yeah, I spar with Chantel and I've sparred with a few of the lads here in, in the club in Far Cotton and I'm based in Dublin every Tuesday to Friday for my training camp so we've two sessions a day and then train in my club on a Saturday and a Monday, take a Sunday off, I always look forward to a Sunday. But uh, I'm lucky that my uh, my club coach is also the the Irish coach as well, so like I'd be lost without him, you know, he, he does everything really he took me from when I was sixteen. I only started when I was sixteen. So from then I've just been with him and training hard every What's his name? Uh Dima. Dima Dmitri. He's a Russian guy, so <laughs> 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 Thank you.